Joining me now from London is Karen Von Hippel, Director General of the Royal United Services Institute, the world's oldest independent think tank on international defense and security. Thank you uh, for joining us. First of all, your overall take about what's going on in Hong Kong today. What is Beijing's end goal? You know, I think they are feeling a bit desperate right now. They know that the world, they're on the back foot right now. They know the world's blaming them for an epidemic, uh, mm -hmm. getting out of control and becoming a pandemic. Uh, they know that countries had already started to push back on the quite aggressive uh, uh, private sector or, or actually a state sector in China, but, but their, their industrial policy mm -hmm. overseas mm -hmm. and the way they were buying into so many uh, critical tech and other industries in Europe, in the United States and elsewhere. Um, so there's been this very yeah. aggressive push by China yeah. and Europeans and others have started to wake up to the threat posed by China. And now the pandemic is capping it all off. So I think they're feeling a bit desperate and they're acting out, they're lashing out probably more than they might have had this pandemic not happened. Are they using Hong yeah. Kong as a pawn? Hard to say. I mean, Hong Kong was happening before the pandemic. It was likely to continue happening, but they are being a bit aggressive and the eyes of the world are on them right now. So they're going to have to be very careful. I do think that uh, mm -hmm. more countries mm -hmm. are emboldened to push back on China than they were before. And in, in many ways, President Trump can get credit for that because uh, previous U.S. administrations were more reluctant publicly to push back on China. And now, obviously, the U.S. has done it many times and many Europeans and others are reassessing their relationship with China right now. So it, it's uh, an interesting opportunity for Europeans and the United States to try to speak with one voice on Hong Kong right now. But do you think European countries, France, Germany, others, I mean, we even heard from Elizabeth Warren, who's on the opposite side of the political spectrum to Donald Trump, say, you know, China needs to be held to account here. Do you think that we'll see countries step in where they were a little bit more reluctant to do so before? It's interesting. I think the European Union has tried several times to have a more unified uh, strategy on China. Uh, China has done very well by investing in some of the smaller European countries over the years. And so some of those countries have blocked uh, a common strategy on China, such as Greece and Portugal. Uh, but I think today, mm -hmm. many of those countries, especially if France, Britain, Germany, lead and push back on this, uh, on what's happening in Hong Kong, I think, I think the EU will join together. I think other organizations are also thinking about what they can do. I think people recognize China is a bit weaker now and on the back. But do foot. they have leverage? Do they, uh, do they have leverage? Uh, leverage to do what? No one's going to go to war, but, you know, China to, should be shamed yeah. publicly for what they're yeah. doing by these countries. And I think that's what it is. It's a public outcry. It's not acceptable behavior. I think that's a message that needs to get out there. Uh, you know, you can't treat fellow citizens this way. Uh, and so I think I think that's really what it would but be they, more than they, anything. It would be. Do they respond to, to, to a public outcry? I mean, in the past, they haven't. They've, they've been acted repressively toward these Hong Kong demonstrators from the get go. Oh, it's a very good point. And I think the West in particular has misread what works with China. I'm not sure what would work with China either. But I don't think the West has been assertive publicly and speaking with one voice um, up to now about this type of behavior in China. Mm -hmm. So they've tried to do it behind the scenes or individual countries have done it. And I think a concerted effort by, you know, 12 yeah. to 15 countries yeah. from Australia to the United States could make a difference this time. Well, I mean, but if it doesn't, is it is this the end it, of the it, Hong Kong that we've known? I mean, uh, you know, that's a good question. And, 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 you know, the Chinese have been pushing on Hong Kong very hard, uh, you know, over the past year in particular. Uh, they threatened to do the same thing in Taiwan. I don't think they're going to militarily mm -hmm. invade Hong Kong, nor will they invade Taiwan right now, but they've been using force, obviously, as we've seen in Hong Kong, police force, another type of force. But I'm not sure they'll go further than that right now. Karen Von Hippel uh, of the Real, R Royal United Services Institute, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure talking to you.